All right, the 10 tracks you need to own for iRacing. Now, everyone's gonna want their own favorite track to be in here. I'm gonna try and go through this, including two aspects. One is trying to get the ones that we like the most, but what, the other reason I say you need to own these tracks is we're gonna look at the most value options. So I've just done a video on iRacing. Add up the total amount of dollars I have personally spent as somewhat of a medium level iris i don't buy every piece of content that ever comes out although i'd like to and i do have more than 40 pieces of content gathered over the two years so i do get that discount all the time that you get applied to your card so you can click on that card to see my total cost um if you're my partner you do not click on that card but everyone else you can do so okay now when it comes to tracks in iRacing there's more of a variety obviously they have a certain amount of cars but the cars can be used on many different tracks whereas because the series will go to eight in a season you know and you've only got one car that you need to have for that track so we'll be doing another video on the top five cars that you need to have uh, that's how I'm going to word it anyway, but the top 10 tracks that we need to have. First of all, we're going to rule in the big ones, and it depends, of course, whether you're doing the NASCAR, the Dirt Series. Rallycross is not a huge amount of tracks, and Dirt Series is only like 10, I think. So it's mostly NASCAR and the road. So you want to get a mixture here, and we'll jump onto the computer. So you want to get a mixture here of tracks that you'll get a lot of use out of, but they're also... Uh, the best one. So the only way to do this is really look at a couple aspects, right? First of all, we need to look at what type of series you're going to be doing. Okay, so if you have access to the website, like you already have a subscription, you can do it through the UI. Otherwise, if you just search in Google, for example, iRacing current tracks, mostly you want to get uh, Overtake or something like this. One of these websites that is aftermarket website. It's not actually iRacing. So iRacing really don't promote this out too much, but you can see all the updates and what the track's gonna be, and they normally have Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that. So a little bit easier if you have the subscription, and that's how we will look at it for today. So first of all, what kind of series do we have options? Well, go current series, and I always highly recommend that you star your favorite series, because if we go all series, there's heaps, there's heaps and heaps and heaps from all different categories. We got tags, we got just B-class on, but we can turn that off, and we can just go for Ever. So we need to rearrange some things. First of all, we're going to go to what you want to do. So we've got the road options. And then obviously, we don't want to do D-class or uh, lower. Because if you're a higher category and you go into these lower ones, you'll be penalized harder. My belief is that they don't want high-rated drivers coming in, obliterating all these lower level ones where they can manipulate a little bit. So they do penalize you really hard for your incident points but otherwise you still can uh, participate in them if you want. So let's go C and B, the ones that we could do. And then you simply click the star next to the name if you're interested in it or not. And this saves so much time. Then you don't have to sort through it every time you log on. You just go all series and you just hit the star. Okay, quick tip for you. Now we're gonna look at the road series. Let's say we wanna do the Porsche Cup. I think the Porsche 991 here, the GT3 Cups, have some of the best tracks um, options or schedules out of any category just from the way that the car drives plus they do like to follow the the real life kind of scenarios so these cars race a lot in real life in street circuits and more wild tracks with big curbs and etc whereas formula cars don't always like that and they can't kind of go to different things so we have obviously Nord life to start the season off like this is kind of what you can expect from the cup cars chicago street circuit which i don't have and you get the idea. Now you can look through here and you always want to aim for doing eight of the races for that season. The sooner you can get up to enough content owned that you can do eight out of the 12 options for the for this season. If you can complete eight, then iRacing actually gives you money or credits to spend on other content in the game. They want to entice people to do full seasons and commit to it. And there's a lot of other benefits as well. Like you start to get really good at driving that particular car. So with that in mind, also looking for our favorite stuff and also looking for the most value, we can soon, soon start to narrow down from the 50 to 100 options. I know NASCAR's got 30 something weeks. They've got hundreds of tracks. So the same type of criteria can work as well. Nord Life is many people's favorites. Keep in mind, you need to buy two tracks here just to race on this one. You need the, uh, the Nurburg ring as well. Actually, Actually, no, you, you don't because this bypasses the actual track. But if it says Nürburgring combined, you do need two. So thankfully, it's really hard to know that one. 
but it says uh, the name that I can't pronounce. If it says combined, you will need the two tracks. Let's go through this um, on Word Docs so you guys can see a little bit easier. So the Porsche Cup, if I was brand new, we're going to want to do a couple different things here. We're going to say tracks we like. We like Nordschleife, English there, Nordschleife. We really like Road America. I watch it on TV with IndyCar, for example. We really like Red Bull Ring, we could say. Now, if there's any other series that you think you're interested in, maybe you have a GT3 car that you really like, race, and then you can get an idea. You're like, okay, look, they actually also go to Red Bull Ring. So all of a sudden, now we're getting the value option in there. And they also go to a couple others. So definitely already, we know that we're going to race these two seasons in iRacing. They're the cars you love the most. They're the ones you're most interested in. All of a sudden now, we're starting to get some value options. So it's ticking one of the criteria. Remember, three criteria. Ones we like. Most value. So going off these criteria here, the ones that we like the most value, which you can see Red Bull Ring is already starting to tick those boxes. It's one of the newest, and iRacing seems to do that. The newest ones, they really seem to throw into series. Maybe a bit of you know, manipulation slightly, trying to, to show people how frequent it is, it's brand new to buy it and add to their collection. And also, what do we already own? You wanna go for eight in the series. Now, that also includes the free tracks. And the reason I'm going about it like this, you probably clicked on this video like, oh, what's the sickest tracks I need to, to own to drive? And I'll answer that again for the video, but I want everyone to understand this is the smartest way to go about this game because it is expensive. So there is a bit of um, method to the madness, if that sound makes sense, okay? So we, we need to get the ones we like, a mixture of also the most value, and you need to get eight for the series. Because as soon as you start doing this, you start getting paid every season. You can get $40 a year total, and there's like four tracks, or near three or four tracks that you can buy per year without having to fork out any more money for it. And the sooner we can get to that stage, the better. And if that isn't a problem for you, well, then you just want to know what the sickest tracks are. So we'll go for the real popular series. If you're gonna do the IMSA, okay, and this changes for everyone a little bit because if you have different tracks already, well then you're going to have to, or have more of a need to buy different tracks to someone else that might not have any, or not, might not have the ones that you have, if that makes sense. Now, well, the IMSA category is super, super popular. That's why I'm jumping to it. I'm not doing it this year. Now, I know that Chicago Street Circuit is the current track on the Porsche Cup right now, and a series that I've both like so definitely for me one of the five tracks that i will need is chicago street circuit and you start to see the how the picture starts to create itself here so everyone's a little bit different that's how i believe you should go about it if you need any more info i didn't understand probably you can ask me a question in the comments below but hopefully that made sense all right What's the sickest tracks though? All right, this is a whole different ball game. If you got a credit card and you just want to know what the best tracks are across the board, then ones that come to mind, but we'll also look at a couple categories to see what the goal is. Obviously, Nordschleife, there's nothing like it. 20 kilometers, eight minutes a lap, banging doors out in some of the most reckless um, racetrack you've ever seen made. That has to be the one. Also, you get a lot of use if you're interested in that out of Daytona and Charlotte. I'm not sure which one of those is free. I think they might both be, but the ones that have NASCAR track on the outside and also road circuit on the inside, you can get use out of. Now, one that I know for sure is not free, but I think is a wonderful, wonderful track that's not talked about enough, is store is called Twin Ring. Now it's one of these ones, Twin Ring Motegi, however you pronounce it. You can see they have an oval setup, a Grand Prix setup as well. So we'll go screenshots. This track is awesome. My brother has it and I've driven on it. Twin Ring is a, I believe it was in Japan. It'll, it'll say under the about section. But it's this um, interesting layout with one corner is tighter than the other. Quite a tough NASCAR track to drive on. But also you can see we go into a road section and with the elevation and going under the track, etc., really, really cool track. And that can also add into your mix. Now, is it one that you must have? 
Not really, but it's worth having the idea that uh, you can use it in a couple of different ways. Also fitting into that value aspect from earlier in the video. Scrolling through the sickest tracks, all right? That's what we're answering. The road in mind. So we've got road set. Um, Hell RX is a not a road section. That's a rally cross. I don't know that why that's come up. Donington's really good, but I wouldn't recommend that everyone gets it because there's definitely some even cooler tracks out here. Um, I really like Phillip Island because I'm maybe Australian, a little bit biased. It's down in Melbourne, really flowing track. So it matters a lot on what car, but the GT3s go there. A lot of people really like that track. So we can just write this down here. And because this one's now all up to a couple of different aspects of what you think is a cool track and what's the nicest to drive is kind of the categories we're looking at. Cool and nice to drive, two aspects then I think that fits the criteria there as well. I'll give you guys more than five options for this. Run our tracks, look at the ones that I own as well that I think are cool. Mons was always fun, but a little bit dull, so I wouldn't recommend that fully. Now, Le Mans, 24 hours Le Mans. I'm gonna put this on here because it's such a, um, the OG track. If you've watched Ford versus Ferrari, it's really gonna hype you up to, to wanna grab that track. And a lot of people have a lot of love for it and the history, although, Particularly, if I see that track, I don't always feel super excited to sign up. Um, it's a big, long straight. You get drafted. A lot of drama seems to happen there. <laughs> but cool track nonetheless, and I would recommend getting it, even if sometimes I'm not the most excited for it. Spa, we need. Big OG track for sure. Simply because, it's again, one of the OGs. It's got a rouge, one of the craziest corners all like that. Big elevation, flat out, blind corner and uh, so much history again with it. Scrolling down, stay away from the street tracks, uh, like Detroit, unless you just hate yourself and you want to get incident points, <laughs> wreck your car out. Cotter's a hard one, a lot of flowy stuff. You guys might like that one. Scrolling down, Long Beach, stay away from. We have Nürburgring. And Atlanta. Okay, Atlanta caught my attention. I saw it getting driven on. I didn't get it for ages though. I saw a lot of people always seem to have good races on it. And now that I race on it myself, Road Atlanta is one that I always sign up for. Without thinking, I just have this natural need to sign up for it. And that's because the, the racetrack itself is set up incredibly well. Now, if we, if we can look at the track map, we start down here, we go into this big sweeping left hand, or oh, so right hand turn, into the blind downhill section. Now, that's a little bit scary. You can't really see what's going on. It's a bit crazy. And then you got this wide left-hander and you can draft down the back into a double right, draft all the way, all the way, all the way into one of the best overtaking spots on any racetrack ever. Massive long straight into this chicane, which is that good because I'm sure they have a screenshot of the chicane itself. That's the starting line over the last corner. I don't know why they're showing that. That's the last corner. That's a really bad... This is like the pit lane entrance. What a photo. Why even show that? Here's a blind section as you go flying down the hill. They're not going to show the chicane, are they? Literally the best part of the track. Anyway, <laughs> the chicane's that good because it's really wide. You've come off big draft section, so you've got like boosted up behind them. And you can pass like deep on the brakes, pass them, but they also get the chance to run with you. And then the, the battle continues up over this really scary but exciting part of the track. And you can go side by side for near half the lap with good battles on this track. But you get a good option to pass, but good option to pass back if you're the one getting past. So the racing is brilliant. Sebring OG one, really rough cement, um, can be crazy. Plus they do like the 12 hours and etc. there. I love Virginia International Raceway. Tough track though, really windy, out in the big green like grasslands of somewhere in America. Uh, so my last one here, I'll put down Sebring. One of those tracks that is uh, iconic in its own way, super rough, built on a uh, old World War II airbase, I believe. So it's old, it's ancient, but it's wide, and a lot of nice areas to pass, a couple of hairpins, etc. So there's your tracks on what is the sickest though, both in the aspects of their cool tracks with their history, but they're also nice to drive and race on. 
and that leaves Daytona, Phillip Island, 24 Hour Le Mans, Spa, Road Atlanta, and Sebring. Quickly, in case you guys are into multi-disciplines like me, so I like to do dirt, oval, and road. I do have an interest in NASCAR, but there's just so many tracks. We'll go over the same thing. Luckily for NASCAR, the ones that get the most value normally are the historic and, and uh, you know, the, the real famous ones. So, you have to have Daytona, you have to have Talladega, obviously from the movie, Talladega Nights. Texas, we've got Motor Speedway. And the iRacing Super Speedway, I've watched gameplay on this of races. It's just mad. It's, it's crazy. The speed and how big you are and how many wrecks there are. Slash Nashville, that's brand new as well. Than any that you know. Right now, they're at Pocono, I know that. Las Vegas, if you want the bull ring. So pick your five from there and you'll be fine. They're all used very well. They have a couple tracks per week. NASCAR series is crazy. And then when it comes to dirt overall, luckily you've um, obviously you want Knoxville used every month, every season because they don't have that many. Um, I really like, I really like the idea of Kokomo. Kokomo looks awesome. I don't like the ones that have like really tight uh, walls or anything. Chili Bowl is the only one that doesn't really bring value too much into it because like four tens don't go there. It's just for the midgets. So that might, you know, stop your... Uh, it doesn't get the value aspect of it. And Williams Grove looks awesome with the big one. So I recommend Knoxville, Kokomo, Williams. Absolutely. Charlotte, I don't like the, like the wall, the fence, and etc. But they do always finish series there. So the only one we didn't touch on is Rallycross. But again, not that many tracks. So you can't really go wrong when you only have five options to get. Hopefully this guy's answered in detail how exactly I'll go about purchasing tracks and how I think you should to get the most value, also get the cool ones, and also aim for those eight tracks per season so you can start getting more value out of the game as a whole, because it is a very expensive title. And then also, if you're not interested in all that, you've got a lot of tracks, you still want to know the five that you need to have, or make sure you have in your collection, well there you go. I gave you some sick ones, in the sense of they're awesome to race on, but they're also very iconic tracks. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you did, you found any help in this video at all, then I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, and you can always subscribe for more iRacing and sim racing content. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.